spotter. Who is that trend spotter? <laughs> Presenter of Travelogue, fashion guru, QPR supporter. Welcome Robert Dutch Elf. Now, I mean, you're the man who Before we go any further, one second, you're not going to ask me about my panties, are you? <laughs> I'm no, worried I worried about this standing there. No, I, I, had, I did all that with Madonna, and, and I sort of, that was it. Uh, you've got to as act far as I was concerned, underwear oh. was a thing of the past. Other bits of clothing I'm happy to discuss, but, I mean, that's part well, we of may, we may get to your outer clothing later on. I described you as a style guru, which oh, I'm God, sure I you love. I Which I'm sure you love. <laughs> but, I mean, who is... Who is stylish at the moment? Who's got style, do you think? Well, no actors bar Terence Stamp and no pop musicians whatsoever. I think. How does Terence Stamp get style? To I that. don't understand that. Style, who defines it? Oh, come on, it's like an elephant. You know one when you see it. I mean, you don't, you don't need to be told what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty damn obvious if it's walked into the room. But is, um, it, is, it, is it sitting around the table? Don't, don't ask <laughs> questions like that. <laughs> you ask questions like that, you always get a smack in the mouth, yeah. <laughs> you look magnificent, dude. No, that, that wasn't a very kind of you to say so, but I think as you, your arrow is pointing at you. So what makes you oh, stylish and the rest no, of you not? No, nothing. It's not the no, point, and I certainly point. never said that. No. You did. Um, oh, dear, look, with Edwina Curry again. It's all coming back. <laughs> right. Where are the helmets? Get the helmets. <laughs> yeah, I think fame also kind of weighs against it an awful lot. It, it does in this country. It makes you do silly things as well, because you get too much money and, and too little people telling you when you're being foolish, which I think is a, another thing that Madonna... Well, people hate fame in this country anyway. Anybody gets famous here gets kicked to death, don't they? Madonna said to me that that's happening in America too. She you said, keep bringing this conversation well, that's back what I thought was the best. <laughs> you <laughs> the best with it's the everything I know about now. People used to ask me about the economy. They used <laughs> to ask me about the recession. <laughs> you know as little about the economy as the Chancellor. I know that. They used to ask me about Clinton, they used to ask me about Bush. Um, she said that there was a kind of resentment now against success in America, partly because of the recession, was her claim. That people are now suffering in America, Southern California, ways that they never had before. So they've brought almost the British disease now, which is to resent success. She claimed that was now happening in America. But is that a disease or is it our saving grace? You see, I quite yeah. like the fact that we don't let anybody get quite too big for their boots. Or we don't put them on such a pedestal that they do in America. I mean, I think stardom's great fun, and, you know, we all like to go and talk to the movies. Who's the star around this table? Well, none of us. Okay. I hope. As long as we're clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But equally, no, it, I don't, you shine for me. No, no, I'm trying to work out where, where your, who your reference points well, are. Well, no, Madonna, then. Madonna, Madonna then. Oh, Clearly, God, let's again. Talk about I didn't mention her. <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> By the way, I got the economy right. It was the Chancellor that got it wrong. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, well, now, can I... <laughs> Can I hold this, this high-sounding discussion down to, to a dull roar for just a moment? <coughs> Wait, whenever we have a guest of your standing, I'm Robert, sitting down. What, what we do is, standing or sitting, we send them out into the streets and find out what the public are doing on a Friday night instead of watching this stuff. Well, of course, the truly trendy public are out this evening in kind of rubber clothes. A fetish wear, as I'm sure you know, is the, is the big thing at the moment. And fetish nightclubs are all that's happening. But, yeah, this is Tell a family show. something program. I didn't know, for goodness sake. Come on. <laughs> As was mentioned earlier on, this is a family show. Although, what sort of family? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, so I decided to do something a little more tame and also a little more in keeping with what we've been talking about. I mean, you've spent a lot of time in Hollywood and you've just spent two hours there. So you know that you can... <laughs> well, isn't there a call? <laughs> there we have it. Two hours is enough. <laughs> you, exactly. You can get a tour in Hollywood of stars' houses. I mean, you get on this bus and they turn around and they say, you know, that's where Gary Cooper lived and that's where John Wayne was in awe, awe and all of that kind of thing. Well, there's now these in London, believe it or not. Poor dear London with no stars whatsoever. You can get on a bus and you can go around and you can see where all the celebrity lives. So, I mean, that's what I've been doing. Now, the first home that we are coming to is a uh, very splendid one. I don't think there can be anybody on this bus who's not heard of Mrs. Thatcher, now Lady Thatcher of Festival. And on the corner is where Anthony Andrews, the actor, has a flat. And then further along is where Andrew Lloyd Webber has not a flat, but a whole large house. Are you enjoying this? No, I am. Are you? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm meant to be getting out of it. I wanted to look in people's houses and, and their bedrooms and bathrooms. But do you think they'd really let you in, all people? <laughs> the Mrs. Mangle tour of London. <laughs> 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 from behind the neck curtains and that's it. Well, <laughs> 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 
Of course, the Duke of Westminster has the grandest address in Belgravia. And the House of the Columns, the Duke of Westminster himself. I took me I didn't know whether to come armed on this one with a dirty old raincoat or a telephoto lens and a direct line to the news of the world. I think, to be honest, a bottle of vodka and some Valium might have been handiest, because you, you don't get to see much. I mean, it's quite nice driving through London at night in a coach. I'm quite enjoying that bit. But I'm sort of rather mystified as to why we're all here. Maybe this man can help me find out. Well, this isn't quite Hollywood, is it? Not quite Hollywood. London's quite a lot different, but we've got a lot of stars in London. And as you can see, lots of people like it. Are you at all worried about the morality of it? I mean, do you feel like a dirty old man organising lots of peeping tools? I don't feel like a dirty old man. I hope I don't look like one. Not exactly. <laughs> a dirty young man. <laughs> now, this time we have the, the flat that was leased by Joan Collins uh, for London Youth. Coming up on your left, we look out for photographers on stakeout, because this is the place where John Bryan... Oh! <laughs> ...the Duchess of York's financial advisor stays when he's in London. I mean, do you not feel at all immoral doing this, prying into people's oh, lives? Yeah. I love looking at human love. I'm glad you don't live near me. <laughs> okay, who was it? Elton John. Elton John. He's got four houses knocked into one. You go through into the courtyard. And two neighbours next to each other. Mark Knopfler. Uh, there they are next to Jason Donovan, star of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. <laughs> yes, you got it. <laughs> Freddie Mercury of Queen. Freddie lives forever seems to be the favourite one. Freddie, you were the champion. Who's got the phone book with all these names and addresses? We've got the master. We've got back at the office myself. He wouldn't tell you where we got it from. <laughs> <laughs> My worst fears weren't realised. I don't feel too grubby. It was actually quite an enjoyable couple of hours. I was a bit missed that my apartment wasn't included. I mean, I've been trying to sell it for about a year. I'm sure if I could say that someone famous lived there, I must be a somewhere. What time is Friday night? I was just thinking this. My friends tell me that there's, they do these tours up the Thames. And every time they go past a, a certain section of Bray, which is on the Thames, just below Maidenhead, the fellow says, and over there is Terry Wogan's house. Look there, Terry, in the garden. Look, you can see him. I haven't lived beside the river for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shattered all their illusions. The cardboard, Honestly. The cardboard cut out. Honestly. Yeah. Now, that, that, that tour has got a, a, a little twist in the tail, hasn't it? Well, the, the funniest thing about it, and I still don't quite understand myself, is that it's, it's financed, or at least partly, by a grant from the Prince's Trust. Now, the Prince's Trust comes directly from Prince Charles. So, somehow, Prince Charles has been sticking his hand in his pocket, bringing out X amounts of grubby five-pound notes and saying, here, go around and peek over my back garden, or Diana's back garden, or everyone else's famous back garden. Do you think Very Prince Charles perverse. Do you think that he thinks that's the base of the Prince's Trust? It's all the Prince's own money. I don't think that's either. It must no, be it's all sure. our money. Yeah, exactly. It's all our money. Don't start yeah, in the royal family again. I didn't say a word. The <laughs> Prince had to sign his name on the he document. Did. He must have seen it crop up as a Topic. Which actually makes me wonder just how much they dislike all the publicity. I mean, are they all really little Madonnas? That's what, what worries me about our princesses. Because I would you know. like to use that word again if we could, because I don't <laughs> think we've got enough of it. And speaking of music, <laughs> now for some vibes. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boom. <laughs> Carried away. Is a band in the American Top 20 with their first appearance on British television singing, Would I Lie to You, Charles and Eddie? <laughs> 